The ending is paramount, is a phrase I've heard from various critics in my time on the YouTube scene. And you know, I've always thought it was bullshit. Obviously, I'm not saying I want stories to have bad endings, but it blows my mind that so many people believe a poor ending retroactively makes the rest of a story worse. Any competently made work of art is crafted in such a way that you can take a lot out of it, even if the ending doesn't meet your expectations. And to help prove my point, I thought I'd take some time to dive deep into a story and franchise that never truly ends. <laughs> In case you didn't already know, this video is part of the One Last Scene playlist, a collection of video essays spearheaded by Nando V Movies and intended to cover the same somewhat broad subject. That, of course, being the last scene of whatever movie, TV show, anime, game, or what have you. So after you watch this, feel free to check out the rest of the playlist. I know there are tons of incredible videos just waiting to get your attention. For anyone who might be unaware, Lupin the Third is a pretty massive franchise, dating all the way back to the 60s and continuing to modern day. So there's a lot of different works I could choose to highlight for this video. I mean, even if we limit the discussion to just the movies, there's quite a lot to pick. I could talk about the mystery of Mamo, shine a lot on my absolute favorite Lupin film. Of course, there's also the infamous Castle of Cagliostro, Hayao Miyazaki's debut film. Maybe I could focus on one of the lesser known but still excellent films to try and get people to check it out. Missed by a Dollar, Legend of the Gold of Babylon, and Tokyo Crisis all slap, after all. Of course, the series are just as worthy of praise. Parts 2, 4, and 5 especially are fantastic, and all have fantastic endings. Hmm, what's a man to do? Ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just talk about all of them. Well, to be more specific, I want to talk about how similarly a lot of Lupin media ends, and what I think the franchise and the series are trying to communicate with that. See, it's not uncommon for Lupin media to end with the titular thief back on the run, riding into the sunset in hopes of finding the next great treasure. Now, that's far from unique for a franchise like this, but I think Lupin uses the promise of future adventure in a really unique way. One of the most interesting things about Lupin the Third to me is how, in a sense, it's a story that's already been completed. After all, Lupin is already the greatest thief in history. There's nowhere higher on the totem pole he can reach. It's not like he needs to keep stealing shit for money or anything like that, so why does he keep doing it? Why does he remain a thief when he seems more than capable of retiring on a bed of cash? I mean, it's not like this is a question the franchise has never thought to ask. This is Lupin's whole conflict in Blood Seal of the Eternal Mermaid. If you want money, there's a ton of other stuff you could do. Why bother to send out advance notice of a crime and then slip through tight security to steal a treasure? And honestly, it's a question that could be asked of the entire cast sans Zenigata. He, at least, still has a goal to achieve with his capture of Lupin, but even then, it's not uncommon to see him written as someone more in love with the thrill of the hunt, arguably uninterested in actually capturing his prey. So what's the deal? Why have we been running this race since the 60s? Well, if you ask me, it's the same reason why this franchise remains so enduring. To me, Lupin the Third is a story about challenging yourself. The reason Lupin remains as a thief is so that he can keep developing his talents. Each new impossible treasure is a puzzle he has to dedicate all his skill, luck, and talents in order to solve. That's why he values his relationship with Fujiko and Zenigata so much. Lupin loves Fujiko because her arguably equal skill as a thief forces him to be better so he can get what he wants. She's sneaky and intelligent, and in order to win both her affections and her whatever treasure he's chasing, he has to outmaneuver her and think ahead. Similarly, he respects and appreciates Anigata for much the same reason. His tenacity and grit makes every job that much more thrilling and earned. Every single Lupin project asks all of our characters to be better than they were before, in some manner or another. In the mystery of Mamo, Lupin challenges the unchanging, unalterable present Mamo hopes to create, and runs off into a future blooming with possibilities. In parts 4 and 5, the cast as a whole has to challenge the idea that there's no place for them in our modern world. In Island of Assassins, Lupin challenges the cruelty of a system that exploits human lives. So on and so forth. Lupin the Third, both the character and the franchise, asks us to never accept the easy answer, to keep trying every single day, to be kinder, or more competent, or more romantic, or what have you. Because that's how you can laugh off the failures as easily as you celebrate the victories. And it's a tale 
tale that never really ends. Not to sound morbid or anything, but while our lives tell a story, they don't cleanly wrap up in a couple hours. They only end when we die. But we can keep trying to be better and better people while we're still here. We can challenge ourselves. Lupin the Third is a story that never truly ends because it doesn't need to for us to take something valuable from it. I see it, in a lot of art, as a snapshot into the life of another person. And in the case of Lupin the Third, that life continues after the credits roll. A great ending can tie a nice bow on a story and make its core messages really sing. But it's not necessary to take something valuable from the media we consume. The heart of Lupin the Third is readily visible, even without a definitive conclusion, and that heart has affected me greatly. Every video I post, every book I write, every class I take, I try my best to see it as an opportunity to challenge myself and develop into a better, kinder, more talented person. I like to think that's something we all want, and it's why I'm more than happy to follow Lupin, Jigen, Goemon, Fujiko, and Zenigata on their never-ending chase. Oh!